going on YouTube? Evan here with Cloud9 Aquariums. Today we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of CO2 injection. But uh I know everybody's really excited about that because you've all been asking me for a while, Evan, you got to do a CO2 video. Well, you know what? I'm finally going to do it. First off, though, I just want to give a shout out to you beginners. This really isn't the video for you guys. Obviously, I'd love if you watched it, check it out, learn from it, um, keep it in the back of your mind, but honestly, don't even think about it. You don't want this to happen to your tank. Um, your tank isn't ready for it, especially if you just set it up. You need to let it balance out, kind of settle down, get the whole uh, hang of things, and really kind of get a grasp of the beginner basics before you, you kind of go into this uh, phase. Um, CO2 injection is not something you really want to screw around with because it's going to put you in a whole world of hurt, and it's be awful. So, that being said, proceed at your own risk. Um, let's talk about CO2 injection. Plants. The way plants grow is pretty simple. Most of you probably already know it from classes in school you took when you were a little kid. Basic gist of how it's going on, you need plants, you need some kind of nutrient substrate, you need lighting, okay? In order for your plants to grow, they need to photosynthesize. In order to do that, the major building block that I believe it's some percentage, like 80% of uh, plants are built out of carbon. Now, most plants, other than like the Rosinaria family, um, are getting their carbon from CO2. Okay, other plants, um, like I just spoke of, vowels are actually able to pull out carbon from different sources also. But the majority of carbon is coming from CO2. Now, in normal nature, that's awesome. Um, because, as you know, most of the air we breathe um, is made up of CO2, so there's really no problem there. In water, however, there's a distinct lack of CO2. Now, there's plenty for plants to uh, you know use normally. Especially if you have fish because, as you may already know, fish take in oxygen, they respirate CO2. So, that's one form that they can get it. Um, obviously, there's going to be some kind of a gas exchange from the surface of your water. Um, or you can bubble it in too also. Um, your air bubbler will put a little bit of CO2 in your water, obviously. Um, and that's usually enough for, you know, standard, uh, just normal plants, normal lighting. That's usually enough to keep stuff growing nicely. Now, for those of you who... Uh, just can't seem to let well enough alone, you want to know about injection. Okay, well, here we go. Um, let's see. Why would you want CO2? The major reason, people want faster growth. We're all impatient. We all have our, um, you know, our iPhones, our Androids, our laptops, our pads. Everything we want has to have quad-core processor or 16 cores or whatever number they're coming up to now. Um, nothing's fast enough for us nowadays. And, of course, Nobody wants to watch plants grow. It takes forever, and we just want everything now and to be done because we're not patient. So we want our plants to grow faster. Um, another reason is it will give you more lush growth. Um, you'll have better greens. Um, plants will tend to put out a lot more leaves at once. So that's you know that's a good thing. Um, if you're trying to fill up the tank pretty quickly. Another thing too is there's some plants out there that are kind of picky. Um, for instance, uh, dwarf baby tears tends to be one of those plants which needs high light and CO2 injection. Um, is it possible to grow without? Of course, it's always possible, but um, a lot of people tend to go with the injection method. Reasons why you might not want this. Pay attention. pH instability. Okay, um, the reason your pH, you know, the, the major thing I always kind of stress to everyone is balance. You want your tank be completely balanced. You know, if your pH is up here, your pH is down here, that's less of a concern to me as opposed to if one day your pH is down here and one, one day your pH is up here. You know, your plants um, and your fish definitely cannot handle that. Um, plants can handle it a lot better than your fish, but still, they will actually, plants will melt off too. They, they don't like the changes just as much as the fish don't like them. So you want to make sure that uh, your pH is stable. Another thing um, is obviously um, the balance of the tank. Um, uh, you want to keep your balance. It's it's kind of be on a fine line when you when you're uh, injecting it. Um, it's a lot easier to balance when you're not getting into um, the more advanced things like CO2 injection. Um, and one of the reasons about this pH instability um, is one of the night problems. I'm not sure if you all uh, are aware of this, so I'm gonna let you know. If you're doing a CO2 injection and you don't have a timer on it, the problem is at night. You're going to be pumping CO2 in the tank just as much as you're doing in the day. Now, that sounds great because you all, yeah, I can, like, you know, boost my CO2 levels so when the lights go on, 
freaking plants have a bunch of CO2, they'll just gobble it up. No, that's not how it works. See, at night, your plants are actually respirating CO2. So they're actually giving off CO2, and in the daytime, they're giving off oxygen. So that works out for your fish, but the problem is, when you're at night, when your plants are giving off CO2, and your fish are giving off CO2, and um, your injection is giving off CO2, well now, you have way too much CO2 in your tank, and you'll notice when you wake up, if your fish are still alive, they'll be at the top of the surface gasping for air, um, because it's just going to be way too thick. So that's something you have to uh, worry about. And obviously, if your uh, CO2 is getting that, um, if the, the uh, concentration is that high in the morning, that means your pH is also going to be uh, fluctuating that much different just between day and night. So that's something that can be uh, serious, seriously detrimental to your tank. Um, so there's your, there's your whys and why nots. Okay, so let's talk about options. Obviously, um, with my channel, I like to talk about cheap options. Well, obviously, and I just said obviously twice, I know, you'll get over it, guys. Um, the best method, if I was going to do this, would be a pressurized system with a timer, um, regulator valves, the whole nine yards. Is that cheap? Absolutely not. It's going to cost you some money. But at the same time, the money you're going to lay down in the beginning is going to be worth it in the end. Um, those types of systems, you actually won't have to refill your CO2 tank. Uh, usually, I believe it's about every six months to a year. So they really do last a long time. Um, but it's one of those things we have to lay down in the beginning. Um, another option, which I'm sure those of you who've been trying to think about doing injection and stuff before I told you about it, you guys are looking at the yeast fermentation, okay? This is the most common DIY method. Everybody out there is doing it. Um, but you know what? It's just one of those things where we'll, we'll get into why and why not for the yeast fermentation. Um, and then your other third option is Excel, which I know I talk about a lot. I'm a strong believer in Excel. And if you're wondering what Excel does, it actually it is a, uh, a liquid fertilizer, but it also um, one of the main things it does is adds liquid um, CO2 into your tank, which is kind of awesome. Um, so the pluses and minuses of those three things. With a pressurized system, obviously you have a timer. Um, you have the regulator valves so that you actually can regulate um, the concentration. So you actually will keep a very balanced tank. Um, your pH won't be fluctuating. Your fish will do fine. Your plants will grow very quickly. Um, so if you're going to do CO2, that's the way to do it. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can talk about all the cheap methods you want. But honestly, if I was going to do it, that's the way you, you want to do it. Um, the yeast fermentation method, the problem with that is there's only really two ways to keep a yeast um, fermentation from actually being stable, to actually be stable. Um, the reason, if you don't know what I'm talking about with yeast fermentation, basically what you do, you pour some yeast, you pour some water, um, and you pour um, some sugar in like a two liter container, you run some hosing from it, obviously you got to seal the whole system so pressure builds, you have a little, um, usually there's an inline bubble counter, which can kind of sort of give you a um, determination as to how much CO2 you're producing. Um, and then you're going to have a diffuser in your tank. And what that's going to do is once the, the, um, the yeast starts um, breaking down the glucose in that sugar, one of the byproducts of that is CO2. It's going to give that off. Um, and if your system's obviously sealed, it's going to diffuse into your tank. The problem with that is um, there's really no way to turn it off, which can be a problem. Um, one of the reasons why, I I mean, the one of the ways I guess you can sort of work it out is, because um, I have done this in the, in the past, I've tried it, it didn't really work that great, I wasn't very impressed, and I just, it was way too much work for me. It's like, you got to change the bottle every, every week, two weeks, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and it doesn't stay, um, you know, when you first start it going, you're going to get a lot of flow, a lot of CO2, and then as it peters off, it's just kind of worthless, and you got to change. So, again, your pH is just going to go up and down and up, and it's just a nightmare. Um, one way you can kind of regulate it is, obviously, you can pull your diffuser out at night to help your fish out. Or another method would be to um, put an air um, an air stone on a, a timer so you can actually, at night, you can just, you know, flow a lot of air in the tank at night. Um, what that's going to do is when you're agitating the surface, that's going to... Um, um, facilitate the gas exchange between the water and the air and that's actually going to um, release a lot of CO2. So those of you who are running air stones and you want to do CO2, um, I would actually not recommend it just because that extra air stone um, 
like I just explained, it's going to be facilitating the uh, gas exchange, and you're going to actually be losing a lot of the CO2 you're putting in, so you're wasting your time. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, Excel, the option with that, which I really like about it, is that I can control the exact dosage that's going in my tank. Um, I can control all the time it's going in, so I can put it in um, in the morning, and it's running through the whole tank. Um, but it's not going to be to some point where I can't put it in at night. It's not a big deal. Uh, fish are never gasping for air. Um, and I can keep a very constant balanced tank with it because I'm the one who puts it in. It's always going to be the same dosage. Um... I have full control over it, so that really doesn't it doesn't make my pH fluctuate whatsoever. And the added benefit with that too is that I can get rid of some algae with it, which is awesome. Uh, the con of XL, um, if you're really kind of stingent on money, it's not exactly the cheapest thing out there. Um, but you know what? Honestly, you can actually get if you're running. It's really good for smaller tanks. If you're running in bigger tanks, you definitely should go out and buy it in bulk. Don't go buy like the 500 or whatever milliliter um, bottles of it. I would just go out and get like the five gallon or whatever jug of it. It's like 50 bucks, but honestly, the little ones are like, I don't know, like seven or something like that. So it, it would work out a lot better for you if you're going to do bigger tanks or if you're you know just going to run Excel for a while, go out and get the bigger one. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it um, online any place pretty much. Um, so kind of some of the factors you want to think about. Um, if you're going to start adding more CO2, um, it'd be pointless to add CO2 and still have just stock crappy lighting, okay? Why do you ask this? Well, the reason is, if you're just adding CO2, your plants aren't going to be able to actually photosynthesize any faster if they don't even have a light to, to uh, you know, um, help them grow. So, honestly, if you're not going to... Um, lighting first, CO2 second. If you haven't upgraded your lights yet and you're still running, you know, a single bulb over your tank, why are you thinking about CO2? I know you all want to get like super complex and let's all get advanced and you're just going to make your life miserable. So first off, obviously you should need to upgrade your lighting because um, it's kind of one of those things where if you're going to drive your car fast, you're going to need a lot more gas. Okay, this is how it goes. Faster your car, burning more gas if you're punching it around town, which some of us do on regular occasion. <laughs> um, <laughs> not one of those people. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, so if you're going to do that, obviously you need to um, upgrade that. Um, I already explained the kind of the fixes where you can agitate the surface, you can stop a flow at night. Um, you know, it's one of those things where do I feel like it's necessary? No, I don't think it's necessary. Do I do Excel? Yeah, I do Excel. Um, I don't really kind of go to like the every single day I put a dose in. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling for the week and how my plants are growing Um you know, if I do a lot of trimming and stuff, I'll, I'll tend to do a higher dosage of Excel just to kind of get my growth back on uh, some of the plants when I trim them up. But honestly, if you're running a balanced take, and if you can stand not being um, just super impatient, you know, we're supposed to be on cloud nine here, people. Um, <laughs> so it should run fine. But again, if you, if you have extremely high lighting going on and um, your plants are kind of just, they're trying to grow, but you're noticing, like, they're kind of yellow and they're, they're really just, um, they're kind of struggling to grow, um, their stems are kind of weak, you probably have too high lighting and not enough CO2, so you might actually want to think about um, injecting something. So that's the fundamentals. Um, if you guys want, I'll show you how to build the DIY yeast. Um, I've done it before. You know, I'll probably even do an entire video just on liquid first because I want to talk about what I use. Um, because I do use other things other than Excel, but I'm not going to get into it because I know this video is kind of already dragging on. And you're like me, you don't want to watch a long video about somebody rambling on about nothingness. So, hope you guys have a great Easter this weekend. Hope this really helps you guys. I know, um, you've really been asking a lot about the CO2 injection. And I just want to give a shout out. I really appreciate you guys, um, you know, how all of you who have been subscribing lately, and leaving great comments and um, just supporting me out um, through this channel. It's actually really cool. Um, I love the feedback I'm getting. Uh, I really do like uh, and really do appreciate any video um, ideas you give me. Obviously, this actually came from you guys. Um, so I really appreciate when you give me video ideas because I want to know what you guys want to see. Obviously, if, you're, if I'm going to put out something you guys don't want to watch, where's the fun in that, you know? So let me help you and we'll do this together. Um, so I hope this uh, helps you guys out. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Leave some comments. Give me a little like for this one. Send me messages. I love uh, interacting with you people. 
Obviously, I'm a little busy every once in a while, but you know who isn't? I try to get back to you. But if I don't get back to you instantly, don't think it's because I hate you. I'm just a busy guy, okay? <laughs> so, have a good one. Hope this video brings you and your fish tanks a little bit closer to Cloud9.